is part of the preparation phase. Just like you need to identify what are the common objections I'm going to get, how am I going to address them when they come up, that's a key part of preparation. Second key part of preparation, who is my audience? Who's my prospect? What matters to them? What does this opportunity mean to them, not to me? Because if I'm going to effectively sell and persuade, I need to persuade for their reasons and not my reasons. If you're, a lot of you novice influencers are out there selling off of what sold them. Well, guess what? That works great if you're talking to people that are just like you. But there's only one person in the world just like you. And the reality is, there's so many different reasons why somebody might take an action or refuse to take an action. And we're going to explore a lot of those different dimensions. They'll give you immense clarity to see, oh man, now I really get it. Now I get why you know, this person, uh, even though I, I laid out my case clear as day, and even though I showed them everything that made me come to this realization, now I understand why they didn't have the same outcome. How many of you have been so frustrated with this experience? You're like, I'm going to lay out every single thing that was laid out for me, that convinced me, and then at the end they didn't take action, they weren't on your side. How many of you had this experience? Come on, be honest. Raise your hand and say aye. Aye. So you've got to understand this because you were selling for your reasons. Your reasons, not theirs. Fundamentally different set. Fundamentally different approach. So having real sensory acuity to this person's position, understanding their own individuality, understanding that they are a multifaceted human being with a completely different bundle of experiences in their life than you have is the first step. Understanding there's so much you don't know about this person. That's number one. A real sense of earnest humility. That's going to give you rapport. Because if you're going into a situation and... If I'm going into a situation and I'm treating Brian and I'm looking at Brian like he is the only person in the universe right now, I've got a lot of rapport right now, don't I, Brian? You do. Because there's not a single thing that could take my attention off this. Not at all. Exactly. There we go. See, he even he brought the. There we go. We made a secret handshake. That's how much rapport we had. Give Brian a round of applause. <laughs> That's the problem, guys. When you're in your situations of influence, you're not looking in their eyes. You're not trying to feel what they feel. You're so worried about what's going on up here. Oh, I can't. This person keeps talking, keeps talking. I'm just going to wait for my turn to talk, and then boom, I'm going to unload an intellectual bomb on them. That's how you guys are going about this. It's not working, is it? So you get rapport, number one. The biggest way to earn valuable rapport is have genuine, sincere appreciation for the person's worldview. Appreciate and understand their worldview. I'd encourage you to write that down. Appreciate and understand their worldview. Or if you can't currently appreciate and understand it, at least try your damnedest, because they will appreciate that. Rapport is also multifaceted. There's a couple different ways you can establish this as well. So you guys see me up here, I'm pretty high energy, I'm you know all over the place, right? When I meet somebody else, who's like this, it's like, oh yeah, go, go, go. Like, what's the bottom line? You know, let's, let's talk about it. Let's take action. Boom, boom. Like, they've got rapport with me. Do you understand? When I, if I go into a retail shop and I say, hey, you know, I'm looking for ABC, you know, can you help me out? And they go, oh yeah, excellent. Let me pull that right here for you. And they provide me, you know, a direct action. I'm in rapport with that person. I'm like, this guy knows what I'm about. He's going to help me. This person understands my worldview. Okay? Now, if I were to go into that retail store and I said, hey, here are my specific needs, A, B, C, and they just try to ask me about where I grew up and, you know, my sport interests, which I have none, and, you know, ask me about, you know, all the intricacies of my background and this and that, because that's, that's how a novice attempts to build <laughs> rapport. Not going to be as effective. Do you guys understand this? So understanding, just even understanding people's different emotional tonalities, the pace that they have, if you can, there's a process, I encourage you to write this down, called matching and mirroring. So somebody comes into a situation and they're super high energy, you want to meet them there. Because if somebody's at energy level 10 and you come in, you're trying to sell them at energy level 3, how much respect do you think they have for you? Zero. Not. You've lost it. It's, you've, got, you've got a massive hole you've got to dig yourself out of. However, you match that energy 
all of a sudden this person goes, oh, yeah, I might listen a little bit more. You guys follow this? Let me give a let me give an example that probably will hit home for you. How many of you have had 